Hello, America. I'm Bo Parfit, co-host of the Impact with Don Wenner podcast. And today, I'm here with Aaron Bear. I can't wait for this interview. I can't wait to get to know you better. And I know our audience is really excited about learning from you. So Aaron, welcome. Thanks, Bo. Glad, uh, glad to be here with you today. Wonderful. You having a good day so far? Uh, it's, uh, I'm out here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a little hot right now, but uh, it's been a good day to be on a podcast, put it that way. All right. And we have a, a, a fun connection you and I both have. We're both um, Midwesterners. So in our youth, we both, both grew up in the Midwest, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's a good place to be from, as uh, I, I, I've always told people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well good stuff. Um, I kind of want to dive into it here. I, I know that our audience is, is dying to hear um, more about you and your book. And let's start with this one. Aaron, what, what, what are your superpowers? What, what, do, what do people reach out to you for? And, you know, just tell us, tell us about your superpowers. Yeah. So, Bo, um, I think over my life, I mean, I've sold a lot of things. So I'd say selling is one of those. I actually used to run the National Association of Sales Professionals. And during that, I left that organization. I wrote an article that sales is dead. Uh, we all live in a buyer funnel. And with so much information out there, we kind of make our choices about how do we lead people to buying. That led me into a career of facilitating, which facilitation is to make things easier, is really the Latin root of that. And my role has been to go into organizations uh, such as Daimler, Mercedes-Benz at the board level and executive level and have conversations about how they can think bigger. And that ultimately um, led to me going in and out of 500 organizations, close to 100 countries. Uh, so it, it got me to do the things I wanted to do, and then ultimately led me to write this book um, that I have over my uh, right shoulder here, Exponential Theory, The Power of Thinking Big, which is really a consolidation of all the exponential stories that I learned when I was in Tel Aviv and Shanghai and Singapore and realizing that the whole world is uh, in an exponential paradigm shift where no longer can we think linearly. Um, so it's given me that superpower. Those all together have molded together where I go into organizations to help them think bigger, uh, be smarter, make decisions faster, and really execute on a, a true purpose, uh, which is overall what organizations need to do to survive in today's world. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, any superpowers at home? <laughs> well, I, I, know <laughs> I have two kids, a uh, daughter, Bally. She's 14 going into high school. I see her transitioning from my little girl to a, a, young, a young lady now. Um, but I can say that uh, I have a special relationship with, with both my kids. I also have a son, Maverick, who's nine. And um, my daughter, though, in particular, as she's a little bit older, uh, helped her really become an entrepreneur at a very young age. Uh, is a patent holder, recorded artist, was a Nickelodeon star, really just one of those <laughs> those daughters that, uh, you know, you gave her the little bit of advice and she took it to the extreme and, and really has done well for herself and in, in just advancing whatever she puts her mind to. And so I think a, a superpower is really thinking big and helping uh, at home, helping my kids really think much, much bigger about their futures and, and really stepping into that future themselves every day. And uh, that's what I do in my professional career, but at home as well, I can, I can say my daughter's a testament to, you know, really living out that thinking big for herself. So it's, it's a proud dad moment right there. I love it. I love that proud dad moment. Um, and Don Wenner, uh, our founder and CEO of DLP Capital, he had a proud dad moment recently. He and his wife, Carla, they have two boys, so two bi biological boys, and they just adopted a son recently, baby Jacob. And it's pretty cool that Don and Carla wanted to do that and have an impact because there's a lot of uh, children that would grow up in the world and eventually enter the kind of the foster care system. And um, so Don and Carla wanted to, to do something about it. So, so good news, a, pr a proud dad moment, uh, just like you. And 
Don, Don and Carly got to um, adopt a, a, a baby Jacob, which is awesome. Yeah. Very so cool. speaking of kind of kids and fatherhood, a, a lot of our audience likes to kind of hear a little bit about, hey, what was, Aaron, what was your childhood like? And tell us, tell us about that. Let's start there. Yeah, so I, I had one of these, uh, you know, idyllic childhoods. I grew up in South Fort Wayne, which is a very diverse community. Um, really uh, kind of a utopian vibe, you could say, of Midwestern cities that we don't, we don't think about cities in the way that I think I thought about growing up. I could be home late after dark, you know, if I had a good reason. There wasn't literally too many hazards that I could thought I could get in and my parents, um, you know, but I often, you know, traveled far from my own home with my friends and kind of explore and, and really see the world. And I think that, that all obviously led me to thinking much, much bigger about my own travel as I grew up. And, you know, I started wondering what it would be like to see the world. And ultimately, I think one of the biggest shifts in my childhood from growing up in a, you know, kind of with a mindset of being very local to being very global was a trip I went on called Semester at Sea uh, in college. And I was able to circumnavigate the world and literally went uh, to four different continents and, and visited, you know, 15 different countries and just had an experience where I, I realized that the world is much bigger than I thought, but also much smaller and uh, at the same time. And, and holding those two opposing thoughts has really helped me kind of decipher a lot of complexity in, in, in my career. But, but ultimately, I think it's, it's grounded me to be very happy from where I grew up and what I, you know, where I lived. I had two parents um, that I'd sit around the dinner table every night. Uh, my dad owned a Subway sandwich franchise, as well as uh, he ended up building a maid franchise, a maid company that basically was the largest maid service in Fort Wayne. Um, cool. My mom was a CEO of a credit union. So every night I, I grew up, you know, basically in a mini board of directors of what went wrong that day or what little problem they had to fix. And and ultimately, um, you know, I say it was very privileged uh, childhood to have that experience. It it made me want to be an entrepreneur to kind of control my time and, and kind of grow, you know, what it did. But it also made me say, I want to skip the whole small business. I want to think bigger. So I ended up writing a book about thinking big just to make sure that I didn't get caught into the small business and, and started being in stuff that could make a real big impact. Perfect. And I want to get into that, um, you know, the uh, the power of thinking big. But before we do that, often people will ask, you know, Don, I'm sure you, is, you know, where does your, two things, where does your drive come from, right? So where does your drive come from? And then secondly, um, tell us about kind of a, a moment in your life where maybe you got, you know, kicked in the teeth or you, 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 you fell down and you skinned both knees. And, you know, how, how, did, you, how did you overcome that? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to tell people that um, I, I have this mindset of uh, really either win or learn. And, that, you know, failure is just something you need to learn. And whatever that obstacle was is how do you eat that obstacle? How do you overcome it? Um, in my life, I've been an entrepreneur. I've sold 12 companies. Um, people are like, wow, um, wow, you must be, you know, super rich. But what I did is I took every company dollars and put it in the next Sometimes I'd fail in the next one and have to kind of build up from the ground up. So many times I, I think, you know, a lot of people went, don't really learn a lot from success. Uh, it's, it's part of the journey, but it's actually taking what, you know, what things that you may have fallen down on and actually turning that into something meaningful. And oftentimes where some people may have trauma, I have a whole mindset around you know, translating trauma into opportunity, meaning like, what did I need to learn? You know, as, as bad as the situation may have been, um, what was this situation created for that? What did I really need to learn in that? And often when people come to me to, to get coaching about their own business, um, you know, I work with CEOs of $10 billion companies and they'll come to me and, you know, we'll literally get to a conversation where we're talking about when they were seven years old and, you know, something happened that, was horrific, but it actually enters into their decisions every day um, mm -hmm. that they're making it for a very large enterprise. And so one, you have to have a better relationship with that trauma and really have a relationship to say, what, what did you need to learn at that stage? And what can you take from that, that actually you take a positive out of that? And it's not that every situation 
you know, needs to be washed with some positivity, but it's that you have to be able to, to be comfortable to talk about that trauma and overcome it. So I think when I've ever ran up against the wall or, or been with my back on the wall, um, I think the grit and determination I've had is, you know, really to, to think bigger is how do I think my way out of this by doing something that's bigger than people would expect me to do? Um, and that's just always been something that's worked for me. I'm not going to say it's going to work for everybody, yet it's a mindset shift that, um, you know, there's been many times where, in one in particular, I'll give you an example. I lived in an apartment when I first moved to Arizona, and I was renting it. I had a truck that I was leasing that I couldn't afford. <laughs> I had $140,000 in credit card debt. I had $120,000 in school loans and I had no job. And the previous year I probably had made, you know, 60, $70,000, but spent $120,000 attempting to, you know, build my entrepreneurial dream. Um, with my back against the wall and all the circumstances kind of coming down, I never missed a payment on my credit card. Um, I've always, Partially because my mom, as I told you, was a CEO of a credit union. So I always learned how important <laughs> the credit score was. Um, yeah. But with my back against the wall, I just started thinking, how could I think bigger to think my way out of this? Um, where I really didn't see many options uh, in the current situation. So I had to reinvent myself um, actually when I'd fallen down and basically just talked myself into believing that I was a much bigger person and that I was making more money and I, I was able to get the deals that I wanted to. And I really shifted my mindset, belief and attitude to, to really create that. And within two years from the day, I remember, you know, literally almost crying in my one bedroom apartment thinking like, poor me, uh, I'd literally kind of overcome and paid off all that debt and really had investments and, you know, really was, was making a difference, owned several condos, did, did some really unique things with that. But, um, it was all about, you know, my own belief system and myself that helped me overcome some of that versus, you know, to get me into that, I likely fell into this cycle of trauma that, oh, the world's against me. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I have in my book, one of my first universal truths is to think is to create. So when you're thinking that, you're literally creating that, you're putting the energy into it. So ultimately learning that lesson and being able to kind of think bigger allowed me to escape, you know, kind of this, this really minimalist thinking that uh, got me in that situation. I love it. And, and some fun parallels. So at, at DLP, we talk a lot about grit, growth mindset, um, you know, the posit uh, positive thinking. And, and it's, it's fun to see these parallels between your story and the DLP story, and probably many of our viewers too. And it's just, it's just such refreshing to hear because the, you know, positivity is contagious and so is negativity. Yeah. So I, I love that you have turned, um, you know, kind of your stumbling blocks into stepping stones, if you will. So great stories to share. Thank you. I think I to, add a, took, oh, to add on to your DLP mix yeah. there, because you sure. actually explained the formula very well of what I consider the exponential mindset. And it, it is the, the attitude or the grit. Um, it is thinking positive. Uh, it is the growth mindset, but then the last piece that if you added to that, you create what I call the exponential mindset is just thinking big. And I know from being at your conference in Asheville, you're surrounded by members that think big, uh, the people that you work with think big, and it's exciting to see, you know, the rapid change and acceleration that everyone around you and that's connected to you um, is creating. But if you add that you can help people think just a little bit bigger about what they're doing, um, which I think you're doing, that's what I would say is the future is an exponential mindset, which uh, ultimately will lead you guys to, to all the goals and dreams uh, to live and prosper, you know, to use your, your DLP um, in the future. So, yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Um, I love, I've been taking notes too while you're talking because you're, this is a lot of, a lot of good takeaways for me. And I know the audience feels the same way. I, I wrote down, um, to have a, you said to have a better relationship with your traumas. And you talked about how a lot of people, even as adults, make decisions based on that trauma they may have had earlier in life. And what a great way to phrase that, you know, like, so a lot of people will overlook a trauma or sweep it under the rug or really want to not, don't really want to get to know it. So Aaron, I think that is, that's, you know, that's bullseye 
uh, perfect, or uh, someone the other day said that's a chef's kiss perfect. Um, I love that, so just want to say it again. You know, have a better relationship with your traumas. Um, that's that's a great takeaway. So yeah, and I think the, for that. to to build on that, I, I think if you look at most of what we learn, our synapses are formed by the time we're eighteen, our childhood, and you know, not everybody has an idyllic childhood, and and you know, part of it that we start to make meaning of things that happen, and we get we create limiting beliefs, and we create doubts and fears and worries and anxieties and stresses about the future based on maybe past experiences. If, you know, the reality is a lot of people will just relive that trauma over and over again if they don't figure out how to have a better relationship with it. And I think that's one of the coaching that I do with, you know, really some very influential people that, you know, when you really get down to it is why are you making these decisions? And when we ask why enough, we, we generally get to some story will come out. Well, you know, maybe it was this or maybe it was that, but you you start digging through when you made your mind up about who you were going to be, like your personality. Um, and that often happens, you know, very young. And, you know, to, to your thing, I work with a lot of foster kids that, you know, have really, you know, hard upbringings that how do they overcome that? It is having a better relationship with whatever trauma maybe they've experienced because, you know, what happens to you, you know, it's eat your obstacles, which is a, a stoic, you know, philosophy. Ryan Holiday wrote a book about it. I think, you know, is, is part of the grit you're talking about to overcome and that attitude, you know, whatever happens, you know, it's happening for a reason to, to learn something. And I think if you can, you can latch onto that even further, that's going to help you propel you to whatever dreams you have, because the reality, the only thing I know for certain, and it doesn't matter if it's Don, you, Bo, or me, uh, we're going to have obstacles that we're going to have to over keep continue to keep overcoming. They just get bigger and bigger, which means that we have to literally get better and better to be able to overcome those. I love it. I love it. All right, let's let's dig into your book, okay? So real quick, if somebody um, wants to read your book, again, for the audience, so maybe someone's driving their car, so tell the audience again, hey, here's the, here's the name of my book, and here's where you can, uh, you know, kind of find it or download it. Yeah, it's called Exponential Theory, The Power of Thinking Big. It's on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or many of the different places. You can look me up at my website, AaronBear.com, A-A-R-O-N-B-A-R-E.com, and the, there'll be more information there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a book that came out in March, hit the Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller list, as well as it was number one in Amazon for um, probably like you know 20 days. Um, literally as a business book and actually hit number two nice. overall. I couldn't, I couldn't overcome, Woo! I couldn't overcome John Grisham. He just had too far of a leap <laughs> for me. And then, um, yeah. also spent time at the top of Barnes and Noble as well. Um, but, but really has been received well and very excited to, to have people thinking bigger as they read it. And I'm getting lots of good feedback and it's created opportunities for me. Wow. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy for me to think bigger. So, I'm really attracting those people that really want to take themselves to the next level. You know, they're coming in my life, including Don and, and you, Bo. Um, just, you know, learning about how to grow, you know, your influence in, in the world. And that's what the book's done for me. It's It's got me on an exponential pace of growth. I love it. I love it. So let's, I've got a question. I'm going to answer two questions. Okay. And, um, you know, it's it's your choice. So you pick, you pick pick uh, which question. So the first one is, you know, it's, you've worked with some very big companies you mentioned before, you know, Daimler, Chrysler, and you've probably worked with some smaller companies. What, what is it? Why, why do companies, no matter of their size, why, how come they don't think big? You know, what are some of the common things that you see? Or question two is, um, you, you know, you can give an example um, of, hey, this is, you know, here's a great example on why companies don't do it. And you can launch, launch into a, a good, tasty example for our audience, okay? You yeah, too. so the first no, no, I, I, or maybe I, both. Yeah, I, I think I can cover both, but we'll, we'll, we'll start with your first question is um, big or small, people get complacent. Like it, it's easier to make decisions at the level you're, you're making them. And what I see today more than anything in big companies and small companies is indecision. And the reality in an exponential world, it's better to make a decision, make a mistake and learn from it and keep growing 
than it ever is to say, hey, we'll just kick the can down the road and figure that out. That happens in global companies, like literally companies I've worked with that have 270,000 employees, leaders that have to make decisions on behalf of hundreds of thousands of people, um, down to small startups that are you know a dozen people looking to change the world. The fact is, is that we have to get into, if we want to be innovative and we want to push the barrier of our own company and growth, we have to be willing to make mistakes. Uh, you know, and I have a model in the book called um, VUCA, which many people have heard of VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. I've really, there's, a, there's another person that kind of created this model that I've adopted, but it's around vision, understanding, uh, certainty, and uh, agility, and our, our clarity and agility. And those, okay. those um, model, like a mental model for the future is how do you establish the vision? Um, how do you under, establish the understanding? Uh, how do you get the clarity to your team? And then really be agile to get to the goal because no matter what, as long as you keep moving forward, making mistakes and learning, you know, and that's where I have this motto of learn or win, um, you will get there. And that's, you know, the time is probably the uncertain thing. But the more and more you can focus a group of people on a very big goal, and that's what the book is really about, is I went in and saw these people that changed the world. I met with them, you know, sp spent time with interviewing them, spent very small companies saying, well, this company is going to change the world because you just see it in the leaders. I see that in you and Don when I've experienced, you know, there's this, there's this thing that just overcomes. And it really is that exponential mindset that we talked about before. You know, you literally had the blueprint for something that, you probably never heard of, but it really is, is like, how do I not think linearly? Well, it's that you think bigger about your decisions today. So what would you do to be uncomfortable in a decision today is going to push you into a place that really creates growth. You know, so much of what I said and I started with in my childhood and moving, you know, circumnavigating the world was me just getting out of my own comfort zone. Every time I went to a new location or every step further I went out into the world, it was like a learning opportunity that I was choosing growth over comfort. I mean, I didn't know anyone on this trip. I went by myself. I literally, you know, met a bunch of people and just kept moving further and further away from what you would call my comfort zone, only to come back a very much a stronger man with a lot more purpose, a lot more intent, and, and really focused on, you know, to, to your point about attitude and grit, really focused on making a, make a dent in the universe. And I think that's... Um, you know, that's what Aristotle would say we're here to do is, is, is really find our purpose and live into it. So. I love it. I love it. And uh, g give us an example of, hey, I worked with a client. You probably maybe can't, well, maybe you can divulge or, or just, you know, you, you know how to answer questions like this. Yeah. Hey, Bo, I, here's a client that they weren't thinking big enough. I came in and, you know, this is what happened. G give us an example. And this is our this is our uh, our last question, and so let's let's have it be the best question and the best answer. All right. Well, there's a uh, soda company. You can pick a blue one or a red one, but you kind of get the idea. <laughs> um, and brought, was brought in to to talk to their hundred hundred leaders around digital transformation and really accelerating um, how do they move to the future and. And part of it was just taking a cross-functional group of team members. So we had the 100 top leaders from different areas. Just broke them down into little groups. So they worked a cross-function and put them into groups to say, what could we innovate? And during this three-day workshop that we were just looking to disrupt the mindset of the organization, we ultimately came out and we were able to document close to $3.5 billion in additional revenue we were able to create from that three-day workshop. So thinking big, that was thinking big. And, and what we did is we, yeah. we found a certain restaurant chain, you know, that had a certain beverage on its uh, restaurant chain. Basically, um, we realized that they were in West Virginia and Arizona. If you deployed it in all the different states, you'd get a 15, 16% growth in just beverage sales. All of a sudden, you multiply that out, you kind of get some big numbers. But we did this in in literally several different areas and we were able to document true results from just getting together and getting people to think about what are the opportunities within the organization and that's what i do is i go into organizations and create that but also just give people the opportunity to think bigger i mean there's there's not a freedom in the boardroom really 
to think bigger. It's like, it's all about, you know, blending in, which causes a lot of problem mm-hmm. for companies. And it's always the reason we make in decisions. It's better to not make a decision sometimes for an individual or a group, but that's where you got to get the collective illusion of a group where their private opinions and public opinions aren't congruent. You've got to get them comfortable enough to kind of figure out what are the barriers we need to push on and what are the things not just in my best interest, but in the companies and how do we support each other doing that? Because so many people are so vested in what there is important to them. It's really to think about the group and how they really grow that. So that's part of that superpower we started off with about facilitating is yeah. getting people in a room comfortable enough to have difficult conversations that lead to uncomfortable decisions that ultimately will lead to tremendous growth. And it's, it's something that once everybody's aligned, I never say we never go for consensus. We just go for action. And then we kind of build on the momentum of that action to kind of get that company. And then once your, once your momentum's going, then you'll see everybody kind of jump in line and say, I was there to push this decision over. Everyone takes credit for that decision then, which um, ultimately, you know, will change or transform an organization for the, for the greater good. Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, again, uh, co-host Bo Parfit on the Impact with Don Winter podcast. And we are just wrapping up a fabulous, fabulous interview with Aaron Barr, the author of Exponential Theory, The Power of Thinking Big. Thank you so much on behalf of all the DLP community and the world and all the world uh, global citizens, if you will, that have that have plugged in and have learned a lot from this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Glad to, glad to speak to you again and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. You bet. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Okay.